let's go and talk about how you are wasting your time inside the classroom. When I was a student, I wasted my time quite a bit. I was not very excited about going to math class. I didn't really enjoy math that much. Well, at least I didn't enjoy math class that much. I had some great teachers. I really enjoyed them. And there was some of this kind of like affection I had for learning mathematics, but actually just going to math class wasn't that fun. So I wasted my time quite a bit. Sometimes I would be drawing. Sometimes I'd be daydreaming. I never skipped class. I wasn't that type of student, but I did find ways to waste my time. And then as a teacher, I also found that a lot of students, even really, really smart and good students, were still not taking full advantage of the classroom experience. Because I think that's the most important thing that we still have with education is that classroom experience. Online education is awesome. Watching videos from all over the world, from teachers all over the world is awesome. But there's nothing that can replace classroom instruction. However, if you're not taking advantage of your classroom instructions, you are wasting your time. So in this video, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about is five different ways that you are wasting your time. It's not so much about wasting time inside the classroom, but just maybe wasting your time of the opportunity that you have. And this first one's a big one. It's probably a huge one. It's probably one that I would say, if you can like overcome this, then you have figured out life because it's something that we all deal with. And that is comparing yourself to others. I don't care what somebody did last year or what their grade is. You need to be able to focus on yourself. And I think that's the one of the hardest things that we need to come up in like self-actualization is like, is understanding we always have to be competing against ourselves, not anybody else. I know we have GPAs and it's so easy to compare our grade to somebody else's and we have scholarships and going into university and you know trying to get top of the class and everything like that. But just focus on yourself, focus on improving. I want you to focus on yourself on your abilities. And there was actually a quote by Gary Vee that I love. He was talking about somebody who was saying he like they did better than him or in some kind of thing. He just kind of laughed and shrugged it off. He's like, you think you did better with me or like that I care. I'm just playing against myself. And it's like, that's all I care about. You can worry about what I'm doing. And you know, he's like, I don't care what you're doing. He's like, I'm only trying to beat myself. I'm not playing against you. I'm playing against myself. And I thought it was such a powerful quote that hit me in such a way that I was like, that's it. Like if we can just focus on improving and focus on doing better against ourselves, it doesn't matter all these external factors that are going on. And I think sometimes that we get so critical on ourselves by what other people are doing. We compare ourselves to somebody that maybe has a parent as a math teacher or has older brothers and sisters that, you know, help them with their homework or have always been there as support. And maybe we don't have support and we kind of feel like they're better than us. They're smarter than us. And it's just not realistic. It just puts us in a bad mindset that does not help us be more successful um, in our class. So it's a complete waste of thought time that we have inside of the classroom. And there's not an easy fix. It's really something that you have to focus in on daily and improve it on. It's going to be something that it carries on in all aspects of life. It's just not in class. But I think if you can really try to identify the times where you are like, why do I care about what that person said or what that person did or how they're doing? Like, I'm just focusing on being myself. I think if you can focus on that, you are on a right path to improving and seeing success. One of the things that students always come up to me is like, how do I stop procrastinating? How do I make sure I do my math homework? Like, how can I focus? in when I don't want to do. A lot of times I look at students and I realize like, what are you spending your time on? Like, what do you do? A lot of times those students will put in there like, oh, I'm like taking all these classes or I always like do that work. Here's the thing. I am a full realist in the idea that you do not need to get all A's or 100% in all of your class. I am actually okay with you to identify what you want to focus on, okay, as your main subjects to like do your absolute best, get your A's, and then the other classes to kind of have a backseat, right? And I do believe that you should have a main focus on the classes that you want to make Make sure that you're doing your absolute best on and then some other classes like yes of course you want to do your absolute best on but you're not trying to like have them take over your life or to impact those main courses that are like your main focus but one thing i find or a lot of students will do is they'll spend their time doing the classes that they enjoy that they focus on. They don't like math. Maybe they don't like math, doing math or they don't like doing their homework or whatever else they do. And they just focus on the work that they enjoy. Even though it might not be the most important or what's needed the most, but they just focus on things that they like to do. And so what I want you to be able to do is think about that idea of eating that frog. Get done with the most important things that you can first. Then you can go and focus in on stuff that maybe you might be able to enjoy. But I think what you have to do is you have to identify what is the most important task or work that you need to be completing for you know whatever classes that you have or that your focus is on and get that work out of the way. Because I think one thing that students struggle with is the discipline of doing that, right? It's very easy when you look at all this work that you have to do, all these exams, all these grades that are coming up and you're like, all right, I have to spend this much time doing this, this much time doing that. And guess what? Like a lot of times students would, they would just spend way more time just because they liked doing it a little bit more, even though it wasn't as important. Maybe it wasn't going to move the needle as much on their grade than some of the other stuff. So I think it's really important that for you to identify what is the 
most important task that you need to be doing and do that work first. Make sure you schedule it and make sure you're disciplined. That's not a perfect you know, gateway for being procrastination and everything, but that is one key step that can help you be more deliberate with getting your work done. The next thing I love, and this is one thing that I found students did all the time. And thankfully, I never was the student when I was growing up, so I never had to worry about this. But let me see if you can picture the students. The student comes in, they always have everything perfectly organized, everything is like color-coded, and you can realize you're like, wow, how much time did you spend, you know, getting all that work done? And a lot of times you can see like, rather than actually doing some of the work, they were spending so much of the work being organized. Now, I am definitely one that could take a lesson out of the organizational space. Like I definitely, I have to work on scheduling time for me to focus on organizing, planning, and getting things done. I've talked about that many, many times on my channel, how important that is. And it's something that I have to be able to work on because I always like to do, do, do. But there's also a subject of students that again, are really very organized and they, they do it naturally. Like that's just the way that their brain is wired. But there's also a subset of students that rather than getting work done, will do organizing as an excuse of time spent rather than actually doing the work. You're wasting your time. <laughs> And you might feel guilty because I have been guilty of this as well, where it's like, I have an hour to do some work to get things done. And then I realize I'm like, oh yeah, actually, you know what? I should probably be like organizing my folder and organizing what I'm gonna do a little bit better. And it's like, is that the most efficient at that time? And the answer most often was like, no, you need to be doing this stuff. Like you do need to organize, but don't let that interrupt some of the stuff that's even more important. And that kind of goes back to my previous point about eating the frog. Like what's the most important thing for you to tackle? Like a lot of it, if you have a study, if you have a test coming, in a four else, like you've got to have to put in that work, right? Don't be trying to like, oh, you know what? I should probably rewrite all of my notes so they're cleaner at this moment. Well, if you have a test coming up, like that's not that important. Make sure you are studying, getting your stuff done and then find some other time to be able to organize or just find a better process for you to be able to get in your organization. But I found a lot of students that would do cheat sheets or would be extremely organized, not always were the most organized person. It's just that they kind of wasted their time focusing on the organization of organizing and just spending their time you know, highlighting their notes and everything else. And I'm like, they might've struggled with math or had some deficiencies. And I'm like, ah, your time would have been better spent rather than having all this stuff organized where it's, you know, nice and clean, but like I'll actually just focusing and practicing and doing some problems or doing a study session or stuff like that. So it's not just organization in general, but just be careful if you are identifying things that you need to get done and you're spending time organizing or planning or whatever else, when at that moment, that's not the most efficient way. So again, it's not all the time you're organizing. That's a waste of time. It just depends on the context or when you're doing it. And this next one's kind of related to it because I think this one comes into a where a lot of students feel like they struggle with math. Like, Miss Mike Logan, I did all of your homework problems. I did every single problem that you gave. I did this whole study guide and I still like failed. And usually my question is kind of a non-emotional response, but it's like, you didn't do enough. You didn't practice enough. You just did what you could do. And the reasoning behind that statement and what a lot of times students will do is like, when I give homework or I give a study guide, that's not designed to be the end all be all of getting every single student prepared prepared for their test or their quiz. That is just basically a guy. And one thing that I found a lot of students will do, especially in their homework, they'll do the problems they know how to do and or the ones that they can complete. And then the ones they don't know how to do, it's either they'll like search it up, right? Chat GPT or you know, Mathway or Photomath, whatever to get the answer to get the grade. And that's it. They don't focus on struggling to working through those problems. They only do the problems that they are good at or that they can do. And then they just either use a shortcut or they don't do the problems that they struggle with. And I'm telling you, that is wasting your time. Now, now, one of my study techniques is doing problems that you know how to do and doing problems that you don't know how to do. That's important. However, when you are learning and you're going through the learning process, it's important for you to go through the struggle. It's not a waste of your time. And I know, I remember when I was in high school, these, we were doing trigonometric identities. And I remember some of these problems would take me 15, 20 minutes. In college, I don't even wanna talk about how much time sometimes a problem would take. Like I would have to stop, come back to it a day, then come back to it another day. Like some of those problems would take a really, really long time. But I really, really think it's important for your mathematical brain to go through those struggles. If you're just doing problems that you already know how to do and like, like it's practicing going through the motions, but that's why I can agree with a lot of students that don't like homework that just feels like busy work. Like it is just kind of a waste of time. Like if you already know how to do something and you're just going over a lot of that same thing over and over and over again, your teacher gives you 20 problems, like that's a waste of time. I don't want you to be focusing on that. Yes, I want you to review for your test going through the motions, but I want you to be careful wasting your time doing a whole bunch of problems that, you know, and I'm sorry if your teacher gives you like 50 problems to do over and over and over again. I want you to focus on those problems that give you a struggle, that expand you, that challenge you 
the going through those problems is what's going to best prepare you for tests and quizzes, as well as best prepare you to fully understand the information. If you're just rewriting, you know, problems you, that you're just copying notes from your teacher, what they already did, you're not really learning. That's just kind of like going through the motion and how easily that information is to remember is how easy that information is to be forgetting. So be careful with wasting your time on doing redundant problems. And again, I'm sorry if your teacher is one of those that gives those problems for your homework. And the last one's a tough one because I don't have an answer. And every single teacher is going to be different. My answer that I did for this inside the classroom was I gave my students all of my notes. Every single, before every single class, I created the notes, I recorded them, I made a YouTube video on it, and I provided the notes online. I don't think or nor do I want to ask every teacher to be able to do that. I do think in our day and age, that is where a little bit more of where we should be heading to, like having information, the access to the information online is such more and more prevalent now and more like expected, but it's also difficult. Like, I mean, that took me two or three years to be able to do, do that and to create that for my students. But what I found is when I, my last year teaching, I was teaching algebra two and we were doing a different curriculum. And so I didn't have all that information up there. I could definitely see that my teaching style was like catered to what I had for pre-calculus where I had all my content already available. I didn't have to tell students to be writing down notes on the board and stuff like that. I could elaborate on what we were learning. In the algebra two classroom, I couldn't do it. It was really, really difficult. And to me, it was a waste of time inside the classroom for students to be copying down notes. I hated students that had to write down definitions or formulas and all that kind of stuff. Like I wanted that to be provided to them. So I know it's not realistic for every student or every classroom for every teacher to have all their notes posted online ahead of the class. But a thing that I want to focus in on wasting your time, what I want you to be focusing your time inside the classroom is what the teacher is teaching, what they're saying and what you're understanding. I want you to be adding to your notes of your own understanding or making connections. That's what I want you to be focused on. I always hated when students like, I'm like, all right, let's go and move on. They're like, wait a minute, I'm not done writing down. And it's like, you can get this in the book or you know, you can write this down later or copy it from somebody else. Like, I just think that's a big waste of the time inside the classroom. So if you can find ways to not be focused on having to copy down things every single day and you can focus on really listening to what the instructor is saying, I feel like it's a lot less waste of your time to show up inside the classroom and you can come away from the classroom with a better understanding of what actually the lesson was taught. Now, in this video, I talked about five ways that you can be wasting your time inside the classroom or in school. But in the next video, I wanna talk about what you should be doing or focusing on that can completely change the way that you study.